Okay, so addressing a little question today with hypothesis testing. We have two different types of tests. One of them is our p-value test, and one of them is using a, like a critical region or rejection region, whichever you want to think about it. So if they both are doing a hypothesis test, what's the difference between the two? So to better understand that question, we have to understand the basis of a hypothesis test. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be comparing something. We're going to be comparing something that we get from our data, some information from our sample that we are then going to compare to some sort of standard that we're using as a basis of comparison. So, for example, what we've been doing in the past is the idea of unusual. You know, if we have some certain probability that is less than 0 0.05, that would be unusual. So, we're comparing two things. The standard and the limit, whatever you want to call it, that we always compare to, we're always going to compare our standards, always going to be alpha. Um, no matter what test we're doing, the p-test or, um, or the critical region test. So we're going to use alpha as a, as a standard. Now, it's important to note that alpha comes from an area. For example, I go back to that last thing where we said something's unusual if it's 0 0.05. Well, we came, that means that the area under the normal curve was 0 0.05 or less. So alpha is an area under the normal curve. Our information that we get from a sample is always going to be a z-score or if it's a small sample a t-score. So I'm just going to call these cutoff values. So in other words we're using our information which is a cutoff value and we're going to try to compare that to some other number which is representing an area. So the big 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 piece of information here is when we're comparing something we can only compare similar units. I can't compare inches to pounds because they're not the same units. It wouldn't make any sense to do that. But I could compare inches with inches because they're the same unit. So in that light, we're going to call cutoff the unit of our z-score and area will be the unit of our standard or that alpha value. So the idea here is we have two pieces of information, our information, which is a cutoff number, and our standard, which is an area. And we can't compare a cutoff with an area because they're not the same values. They're not the same units. Now, that's exactly what the two different tests are going to do. If we have only two numbers to compare with, we have our value, and then we have the alpha value. Our value is a cutoff. So the p-value test takes this cutoff and converts it to an area. Alpha already is an area. So we took our cutoff and converted it to an area. So now it would make sense to compare an area with an area. Well, what if I didn't want to change my cutoff? Again, we're always starting with our cutoff and some really important like standard level that we're going to compare it to. Well, if the p-value test takes our unit and converts it to this unit, the critical region test is just going to go to reverse. It's going to take this alpha value, which is an area, and it's going to convert it to a cutoff. So then at the end of the test, it would make sense to compare cutoffs with cutoffs. So the general idea of our hypothesis test, whether it be the p-value or the critical region, is we need to get our information in the same units. Now, why is that? It's just a quick thing to note that on a normal curve, the reason why there's two units is because we could use either unit to describe the picture we're trying to think of. So if I have this normal curve here, you can see I have a cutoff, a z value of negative 1.28. So that's my cutoff. By placing the cutoff there, I automatically am saying this is 10%. Because remember, the total area under the normal curve is 100%. So I'm just saying, well, if I put the cutoff there, well, by definition, this is 10%, which means the rest of it is that 90%. So if I'm trying to get you to describe what I just drew as this standard normal curve, I could say two things. I could say it's a normal curve with 10% of the area to the left tail. That would make this picture. Or I could say this is a normal curve with the area to the left of z equals negative 1.28. So here I'm describing the normal curve by using area. Here I'm describing the same normal curve by using a cutoff. We can see that here as well.
So if I'm supposed to draw a standard normal curve for these, well, let's just say this is the directions. I need to fill 25% of the total area of the standard normal curve starting from the left. So if I do that, that means, okay, here's my normal curve, and I want to put 25, I want to fill in 25% of the area. So I'm going to approximate here right now. Well, let's say that right there is 25% of the normal curve. Sweet. Now, we'll notice the question down here says shade the area to the left of z equals negative 0.6744. So what I would have to do here is say, okay, well, standard normal curve, this is zero. So like, let's just say this is my negative point or zero point six seven four. So they want me to put that border there and then shade the area to its left. But what we're going to realize is I just did the same problem twice because if I use my calculator to figure out what is the area that I just filled in here, so like if I use my normal CDF and I want to start all the way to the left at negative infinity and count up to that negative 0.6744, which is slightly rounded a little bit, but we're going to see that this area is 25%. That's why I chose this z value as our score here. And up here, if we said, well, we know this is 25%, what was the cutoff, right? And that's where we use our inverse norm. Our inverse norm is just asking us, well, what would the cutoff be if that was the area? And what you will see is it gives you the z score. It might be slightly rounded, obviously, but this z score right here is going to be negative 0.6744. So I could have you draw the same picture using two different descriptors, either area as a descriptor, like I did here, or I could use the critical value of z as a descriptor, and you just shade in the picture. So it doesn't matter which unit we're using to describe the normal curve, area, or z-scores, which is why we have two tests. So just to like combine all of that into one example. So I, I just made up some data here up on top. We have a null hypothesis saying that the average is less than or equal to 1,745. And our alternate hypothesis, therefore, by definition, is saying that the average is bigger than 1,745. I took a sample of size 44. And I got the sample average to be 1,752 with a standard deviation of 3.8. So let's say I'm supposed to test my hypothesis at a level of significance of 0 0.10. Now the difference between the tests, it doesn't matter. Both of the tests, we need some sort of our data to begin with. Now that could be a t-score or it could be a z-score because our sample size was bigger than 30, we know that we're going to use the z-score. So no matter what test you're running, you always have to start with your information. And your information is a cutoff, whether it's Z or it's T. So on this one, we're going to find out our information. So we take our sample average, 1752, and subtract it from the hypothesized average, and then divide that by the standard deviation of the sample over the root of the sample. And when we do that, I'm just going to round here, 1.22. So this is our value. This is our information, and we, it's really important to note that this is a cutoff. So we have our value from our sample. We're going to use that to compare to some standard to make a, a claim about the population. So our standard, our value, our cutoff value is 1.22. So now we have our value. We have our data as 1.22, and that's a cutoff value. So we need to make a decision. We have a cutoff, but our standard is written as an area. So we either need to ask yourself, am I going to convert my cutoff to an area value, or am I going to take my area value and convert it to a cutoff? Again, that's what the, the two tests are. So if we're doing a p-value test, this is going to be comparing areas directly. Because, and the way that I think about it is, this p reminds me of probability, and I know that in the normal curve, probability is area under the normal curve. So the idea here is we're going to compare something. We already have the area of our threshold, 0 0.10. What we need to do is get the area for our data, and then we'll compare those. Um, and the way that I think about it is it's a threshold. So I'm thinking about it as like a, a pretty classic like fundraiser where you have this thermometer and you're trying to fill it up to a certain amount. So how much of the thermometer should be filled up? Well, our limit is 0.10. Or in other words, if we think about it as a normal curve, since this is a right-tailed test, 
we want to fill that up to be 10%. So what we need to do is compare it to our area. So if we start filling in our area, does our area pass that threshold, which means would fail to reject? Or does our area not pass that threshold, which means we are going to reject? So that's our general idea here. So what we need to do is we need to get our z-score into an area. So if we know that our z-score is 1.22, we need to convert that to an area. And that's where we're just going to use um, our normal curve. So since we know this is a right-tailed test, we know that this z-score is 1.22. So we're looking for the area to the right. What is this area here? So now what we're going to do is just we're going to use our normal CDF. And we want to count starting at our cutoff of 1.22, go all the way to infinity to the right, and then describe our standard normal. And if I do that on my calculator here and I get that area, I get 0.111. I'm just going to round that. So I've taken my p-value, which used to be a cutoff, and now I've converted it to an area. So now I can compare area with area. So 0.111, that is bigger than my threshold. So I've passed my threshold. So I would fail to reject H null. Now for the critical value or the critical region, I'm just going to call it critical test, we're just converting the other one. We're saying, okay, let's keep, let's keep our, our information as a cutoff. Let's take the standard and convert that to a cutoff. So we're asking, again, if our critical value, like our cutoff value is 0 0.10, and again, this is a right-tailed test. So we're saying, if this area right here is 0.10, one zero. Well, what's that number there? What's the cutoff value? Because again, if I say the cutoff is here, that makes this be 10%. Or I could say this here is 10%. So what's the cutoff? Again, there's two ways to describe it. So on the critical value test, we're going to take our alpha, our standard, and we're going to compare cutoffs with cutoffs. So what I need to do is I need to find out if 10% of the area is in the right tail, what is this critical z-score here? So I'm just going to use my inverse norm. So if there's 10% in the right tail, that means there's 90% before it. So that's why I'm using 90 as my area in the inverse norm. And when I do that, 0 0.90 as my area, that tells me that I get some critical z-value of 1.28. So that's our standard now. So rather than alpha equals 0 0.10, this is now a cutoff. So now I can directly compare a cutoff to a cutoff. So I have my value, 1.22, being compared to this new value, which is a cutoff now, 1.28. Now the comparison here is not quite straight as forward. We've got to ask ourselves, where would that place us? So if my z-score is 1.22, I'm going to use this as a green line here. Because if this z-score is 1.28, 1.22 is a little bit to the left of that. So I'm just going to place that here. So what I can see here is my z-score, my cutoff, was below the cutoff for the rejection region. So again here, because our z-score is not in the rejection region, we are going to fail to reject H null. Again, we get the same answer. It's just what are we using to compare those two. Now just take one last moment to compare the differences in those tests. So what we're saying here is for the area test, which is our p-value test. We're saying, hey, we've come up with a limit. Now this is a right-tailed test. So you need to be able to fill up this much area of your right tail. If you can fill up that much area, then you are going to pass the test, so we'd fail to reject you. In other words, not reject. If you can't fill up that much area, we are going to reject you. So the p-value test is saying, hey, okay, well, let's go fill up the area. How much area do you want me to fill up? Well, I could say fill up 11% of the area, which is like, okay, well, we know our cutoff here is 10. 
So this is 10%. So if I had to fill in 11%, I'd start here and be like, okay, well, I'm filling out my tail, filling out my tail. That's 10%, but I filled up more than that. So I have passed my threshold. So I'm not going to reject it. Now think about the same thing. All the z-score is, is telling you where to fill up from. So rather than saying the area is 10%, we could say this is your cutoff and say, where is your cutoff? Well, my cutoff was 1.22. So it was here. And again, since this is a right-tailed test, we're viewing this from the right. Well, I needed to get to here. This is where I would reject. But since I passed it, I'm not going to reject. But see how that just relates to an area. If this is my cutoff, that's saying we'll fill up the normal curve up until that point. So this is now back up to here, where we just started with an area. If this was my cutoff, that's telling me to fill up the area to that cutoff. So the cutoffs and the areas are analogous. They're telling you to fill up the same part of the normal curve. One of them is telling you how much area to fill in directly, which is right here. One of them is telling you where to stop filling in your area as a cutoff, and that still tells you to fill in the same amount of information.